One of the reasons why God could use him is because of his, his humility. And oftentimes, uh, people that seem that they're lacking something within themselves, they become great vessels and great vehicles for the power of God to express through because there's nothing to inhibit the flow from expressing through them. Very often we think we have impediments or limitations and we don't think God can use us, but God will take your limitation and use you and it to deliver somebody else into a new place and a new way of being. So the sea opens and then the real journey begins because they spent 40 years in the desert. which is in the Bible and in many of the mystical traditions. 40 is symbolic of simply this, the amount of time required for transformation. Noah has 40 days in the flood. Jesus has 40 days on the Mount of Temptation. Moses has 40 years in the desert. It's the amount of time required for the transformation. And for some of us, this is our 40th moment right now. Watching this right now, we know that this is the moment when the life we've lived is not sufficient to the purpose that we're being called for. I think it's useful for us to understand why the soul came to the body. Now, the soul came into physicality in order that it might experience itself, express itself in the physical world as who it really is, thus to know itself in its own experience. So the fear is that if we identify the I am that I am with the I am that I am, that somehow it makes us pretending to be something we're not being or taking on something. But what if it's just the opposite? What if by saying that I am an opportunity for the I am that I am to presence divine love through my hands this day to a child that I'm teaching or to an old person I'm helping carry the groceries or to someone that I call who's in pain or hurting in some way and I'm the voice that comforts them. What if when we give ourselves just the possibility that if we allow ourselves the I am that I am might be an avenue through which the I am that I am that is God, that is the presence, that is the power of life itself might find a way, an entry point to make a difference for good right here on planet Earth. Ah, oh, but we gotta be careful here because when the ego starts to think that it's God, it just gets arrogant, it gets greedy, it takes us over completely. It's not a pretty picture. We have to dip into our soul, to our essence, in order to be all that there is. The difficulty is this. We're a mixture of a constellation of different identities that have emerged for different reasons. We're mothers, we're fathers, we're brothers, we're sisters, uh, we're employers, we're employees. There's, there's all kinds of identities and every single identity is pulling upon our energy for its survival. However, there is a central identity which is the I am presence. There's a central identity which is not in comparison with all other identities or in comparison with anybody else. It's the image and likeness of God. It's a unique configuration of infinite potential, infinite possibility. And within that core identity, it is speaking, it's calling our real name and inviting us to greatness. It's inviting us to be more ourself. Remember, it's the still small voice. We have to get quiet enough to hear it. And through spiritual practice of prayer, lowly listening, meditation, after a while you're able to tell the difference between the voice of one of the constellation of shifting identities or the true voice that's coming from your soul that wants you to be great. And the definition of greatness is your capacity and your willingness to serve. When we get past survival, when we get past those small-minded things, then the only thing the soul wants to do is to uh, make a difference, to, to give to humanity. What can I do? There's so much you can do, you can't even believe it. Right at the end of your fingertips is a whole world of your possible creation. And it is ignited, it is inspired, it is embraced, and it is in fact experienced in extraordinary ways the moment you decide to be in service not just to the world, but to the world of your own creation. When that central voice begins to speak, and it's still, and it's small, it's calling you to a greater degree of service, and a greater degree of serving humankind, a greater degree of serving your family, a greater degree of serving everyone you come in contact with. That's one of the ways you can tell the difference between that voice. Is it calling you to serve, or is it calling you just to take care of yourself? 
is calling you just to take care of yourself. It may be coming from the ego. The question often uh, rises for us, so how do I know the difference between God's will and my will, and do I have a will, what do I do with my will, and um, my understanding of that is that, where is God? Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. So within us, we know we have the pharaoh part of the intellect or the part of us that argues for circumstances that we know. And then there's the prophetic part, or there's the part of us that does have a destiny, that does have a call to make a difference for good. And so when we align the pharaoh with the heart, then we align our will with God's will. When we enact creation, we are uh, emulating the creator. And the result of that is that we feel good. We feel love, we feel expanded. Your soul needs inner peace, it needs contentment, love, creative expression, and of course divine connection. Those are the qualities that make you feel good. You're actually wired so that you'll know you're on track by the aliveness you feel. I am that I am. And it's in your being, your embracing of the presence and standing in that that you give the greatest gift that you can to the world. And so the understanding about that and the living from that is the journey. Of course, the Miracles calls it the 18-inch journey from the head to the heart. In that moment, standing there, overlooking ground zero and all the chaos that was going on arose my, my life destiny. All my selfish pursuit of trying to get what I needed to get and be where I needed to be in my life just seemed ridiculous. I knew that from that point on, my life would be about all of us. It would be about community. My heart was so filled with possibility of what we're capable of when we're working from that point. Because I know it's possible, my whole life now has been about recreating that community. It is the, the catalyst for my wanting to create Elevate Film Festival, which is, when you really break it down, it's just a community of people who understand this oneness that I'm talking about. Can we bring people into an experience that's so much bigger than who we think we are, that we can experience that level of oneness? Because when you do, there, there's nothing more beautiful in this lifetime and this experience. There's nothing greater than that. The kingdom of God is unconditional love. The kingdom of God is peace of mind. The kingdom of God is joy in my soul. I said, yeah, let me seek that stuff. And then I don't have to worry about getting anything, being with anybody, doing anything special. Let me go for the unconditional love, first of myself, and then to be able to extend it to everyone else. Let me go for the peace of mind, where I'm not worrying about what might happen, what could happen, where I'm just embracing the presence, my I amness, the manner of God in this right now moment. Let me go for that, and let that trickle down and fill every other aspect of my life. That's the kingdom. To that degree that we begin to know who we are, that who I am behind my eyes is the same person that you are behind your eyes. And that's the kingdom and that's the connection that connects all of us. And as we get closer to that, then we begin to manifest the attributes of that in our life and our daily living. So once I really understood what the kingdom was, oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, I want to seek that. <laughs> So paradoxically in that moment, while the world was experiencing chaos and confusion and fear, I was standing there experiencing my first true experience with God through giving and the service that I was witness to. I had experienced the oneness, the greatest sense of oneness that I ever knew was possible. And from that arose my destiny. Now that we understand the three keys for experiencing ourselves as an embodiment of God, now it's time for us to consider what we can create from that new experience. If saying and being, I am that I am, really can unlock the power of God within us, the next question is, well, how extensive is that power? Can we move mountains and create miracles like Jesus and Moses? Are these just fantastical ideas or can they really change the world? 
I is the creative factor of the universe, and when you add am to it, what you get is the movement of the creative force of the universe. So every time you say 